Today, we're going to take a look at what most people might consider to be one of the most infamous mods ever made. A mod with such an impact, it stirs up trouble wherever it's mentioned and polarizes Half-Life 2 fans. Today, we're going to be talking about the cinematic mod. This video is part one of three of the Rad Has Cinematic Special series. 19 years ago, in 2005, a mod by the name of Cinematic Mod would pop up. It was a simple texture replacement mod that would replace the face and body textures of most of the characters in Half-Life 2. Plus it would replace some of the weapons and prop textures too. Nothing too out of the ordinary. But as the years passed by, Jürgen Vierhelig, better known as Fake Factory, would keep on developing this project. And in 2013 would release the final version of the mod, Cinematic Mod 13. In 8 years, Cinematic Mod had garnered quite the reputation, a majority of that reputation being that the mod completely ruins the game. Many fans would criticize that the character models are horrendous looking and the maps and the art style has been ruined. But is that really the case? Cause to be honest, I feel like the extremely harsh criticism put into the mod is more than it actually deserves. Fake Factory left the project because of this criticism and, in some cases, harassment from people. But Fake Factory himself wouldn't budge, he wouldn't listen to feedback or criticism at all, he would do what he wanted to do and we ended up with a monstrosity of a mod. While I certainly don't think Cinematic Mod is a masterpiece, I feel like there's an actual good mod in there somewhere. It's not all bad, but not all good either. The best way to describe this mod would be to say it's a mixed bag. And I noticed that a lot of people miss something before trying out the mod. This is supposed to be a quote unquote cinematic mod, it's supposed to be this cinematic overhaul to the game rather than a true to source material remaster that I myself was expecting it to be. Imagine if Hollywood hired Michael Bay to make a Half-Life 2 movie, then this would be the result, an over the top, fancy and graphically intense experience. Let's talk about the character models. The highlight of the mod is how overtly sexualized Alex has become. There's a character selection tool, oh, I mean the character pimper tool that lets you select what model should appear in the game. For the male characters, it's a simple option between stock and modded, but for Alex, there's like a dozen different options with each of them being as far as possible from the original model. Skimpy or just outright weird clothing is what most of these models have. The one I selected is supposed to be a HD remaster of the original model, but even then her nippies are visible through her shirt. Same issue with Judith Mossman, her three alternate models all have clothing that let her pokies poke through her shirt as well. I selected the model that looks like a Doom 3 character I guess. This skimpy and sexualized clothing just doesn't work with a game like Half-Life 2. I could maybe accept the faces being completely different, but the clothing they have make it look like I'm playing some adult game rather than an FPS. I know some folks might defend this by saying, so what? You've never seen boobs before? I mean I have, but the point is Half-Life 2 isn't the game you sexualize. A game like GTA or Saints Row is where sexualized elements like these would work because the world they take place in is accommodating to things like these. Half-Life 2 is supposed to be a story of overthrowing a totalitarian, ruthless regime with a bunch of normal people, not supermodels. Also I know the Alex model has her insides fully modeled, but come on, that should be the least of the concerns about this mod, or that she has a quote unquote toy in her room in Black Mesa East. I just installed the explicit patch that takes that toy and some adult graffiti out and replaces it with normal stuff. Now, we'll get to the graffiti bit later, when I talk about the maps, but the male characters are a whole nother story. Barney looks like a D-list Hollywood reject, Eli looks like William Knight, Father Grigori looks like a Mafia Don, Breen is now a generic US president, Kleiner looks like a registered sex offender, Magnuson looks like Ray Wise? I loved him in Twin Peaks by the way, and the G-Man, well, he looks like a door-to-door -door salesman. Lastly, the civilians and the Combine also are given an overhaul. 
The male civilians look kinda okay-ish, but the female civilians again suffer from the same problems as the Alex and Judith models. All of them have their hair done, have makeup on, and have super clean clothes on. Half-Life 2 is supposed to be a world where things are pretty much shot to shit. You don't have time to care about makeup, laundry, or doing your hair when you're not even sure you'll have something to eat for the day. The Combine are supposed to be ruthless, but in this mod it makes them seem like somewhat caring. Speaking of the Combine, while the military outfit does look cool on them, it kind of feels weird when the Metro Cops, the lowest ranking Combine unit, is decked out like a special forces unit. The main issue arises is when you realize all the Combine foot soldiers are wearing the exact same outfit, so you can't really distinguish between who's a soldier, a shotgunner, an elite, or a prison guard, because they all look the same. The worst part of this new uniform is that it's all black. The original design had some color on them, so from a distance or even in dark areas, you could at least see them. But since now they're in a black uniform, good luck trying to figure out where they're standing because they all blend into the map. But all of this, this whole debacle about the character models being outrageously different from the original source material becomes null and void when you realize you can just disable them and use the original models instead. For this video, I chose to use the custom models. Now I want to say that I wish this mod had gone the remastered route rather than the replacement route. Like improve the existing game assets rather than adding in new ones. But I don't think Fake Factory was a proper modeler. Given the amount of content in this mod, I don't believe he made all of this. I believe he took all of this content from the internet like the models, the textures and I guess most of this from different sources and slapped them together into the game. But I do wish remastered models were available at the time so he could have used them. I don't know if they were or not. Then comes the weapon models. These too can be turned off, but oh boy the weapon models. The crowbar has a nice and very decent animation to it, and the gravity gun looks the same. The pistol is now a USP with a laser sight? I don't get that. Why the laser sight? The worst part is that it messes with the crosshair. Like the crosshair stays still obviously, but the laser moves around and it feels like the laser is the true crosshair, even though it's just there for appearance. The MP7 is now an MP5 with the grenade launcher which kinda sounds and looks okay. The AR2 is an MP5 with a holographic sight. Well, someone on my stream chat told me it's actually an HK-53, which is basically an MP5 but it uses different ammunition like other assault rifles. Still odd though. And it sounds like absolute garbage by the way. And somehow the grenade launcher it has spits out energy blasts like the AR-2 does. The shotgun reminded me a lot of the Beta shotgun mixed in with the Black Mesa shotgun. It was kinda decent. The crossbow is the same as before along with the rocket launcher, grenade and the antlion guard ball. All of the replaced weapons have issues though, like animations being broken, the sounds not being in sync or in the shotgun's case, it felt like it was somewhat slow to use. Like the reloading took much longer than the original shotgun did. I don't know, maybe the supermodel Alex is getting to my mind. Okay, so these are all the things we're working with, and these are the same things that are mostly brought up in discussions about this mod and why they are the reasons the mod is bad, especially the Alex models. But I feel like most people miss out on the actual good stuff the mod has to offer. So let's start from the beginning and quickly go through each map, each chapter, and see what is done right and what is not done right. So after G-Man with the big eyes and tic tac teeth tries to sell me insurance, we get off on the train station and immediately are hit with the overhauling nature of cinematic mod. Now CM tries its absolute best to make sure that the world appears 1. as dirty as possible and 2. as dense as possible. This is done with the overwhelming amounts of props and decals plastered everywhere. The amount of props laid around the maps have been increased in numbers so much that it lagged in some places for me. But underneath all of this, I have to appreciate the texture work this mod does. In most places, the textures do feel like they are a better and higher resolution alternatives to the original source material. The mod also makes sure that most of the chapters feel as dense as possible by adding on new geometry on pre-existing structures, like this corridor is usually empty but now it has all this going on. But in very rare cases, you'll see the best bits of this mod. Which ones? 
Well, the 3D models that look exactly as the original model but have a higher resolution textures, like this combine console that Barney uses. Jumping outside, we get to see some very overgrown vegetation. That is foreshadowing about how crazy this mod goes with the vegetation. One thing I appreciated was how some of the posters that are added actually reinforce the idea that this city is in Europe. But then I wonder why are they in such a fresh state? Did somebody just post these here? So the Combine is now allowing citizens to arrange stuff like this? The train station hall looks overtly dirty and actually looks pretty cool. But then I stepped outside. The god rays were bugging so I turned them off. But here's the thing. The new textures look absolutely brilliant on these buildings and I think a bit of tone mapping is going on that also changes the overall atmosphere of the visuals and that also feels great. But these trees, the excessive usage of ferns on the ground and the wall is just overkill. The vegetation makes it feel like this is supposed to be an abandoned post-apocalyptic city even though it's inhabited. Every nook and cranny with dirt or grass now has a crap ton of vegetation growing on top of it. The way the outside places look makes it so that the combine somewhat cares about its citizens and grows trees and vegetation so it looks nice. I don't think the combine are nice like that. Like one of my friends said, they're here to pump and dump the earth, not maintain it. But the mod's issue isn't that it strays away from the source material, its main problem is that its own art style is in conflict with itself. Some places look like they've been looked after and some places look like they haven't been cleaned in 20 years. This mixture is why I feel so conflicted myself, like the skyline looks out of place since it makes the city look more like London or New York rather than the Eastern European city this is supposed to be. And oh god, the lens flare. This is why I said earlier that the cinematic mod is like a movie made by Michael Bay. Most if not every light source has a lens flare to it. While it would have been nice to have some subtle lens flare, these ones make my eyes hurt after 30 minutes of playing. Kleiner's lab has been updated to look more rustic and most of the props and models have been retextures or outright replaced with new HD models and I liked changes like these where you could see the brand names and what the thing is supposed to be. Now I don't know why this mod did this to the HEV suit, I mean look at it. Why is half of it silver colored? Why are there shin guards? I'd rather have a crotch guard instead. But then there's good stuff like this, actual lore relevant stuff on Kleiner's board. Then we talk with William Knight on the monitor and do the whole teleporting sequence. Then we head outside and again, on the point about vegetation, there's a perfectly maintained hedge here. Like did the combine hire a gardener for this? Now here's another shit ass thing this mod does. When you sprint, the camera shake kicks in and you cannot turn it off. It forcibly moves your camera around and it honestly makes me sick every time. But then, this is what I like. This is what we needed more of. More of this and less of this. Honestly, a lot of maps don't look half bad. Some of them have expanded areas or new areas that you can move around. But don't worry, there are pretty bad looking maps too. Now this may sound stupid and a little nitpicky, but if the combine can hire a gardener to maintain this hedge, why not ask the guy to maintain the grass too then? Why not have him cut the grass and the ferns that are growing uncontrollably? Don't show me overgrown vegetation that hit me with a properly maintained hedge. Most of the updates in the maps follow a similar pattern. First the textures are completely changed with ones that are higher resolution, then decals and graffiti are added to make it more desolate, and finally a shit ton of props to sell the players on the whole look. Oh, and I also met one of the most oily Vortigaunt ever. In fact, all the Vortigaunts in this mod are oiled up. Now in Root Canal and Water Hazard and in the later Uprising chapters, there's a problem that arises. You know how the mod adds in all the props and models to make the place look more dense? That would be cool if it wasn't in the player's path. Like in some places, I kept getting stuck on this newly added 3D meshes. Also, look at this lady hiding in the sewers who has super clean clothes on with makeup and her hair done. Jesus Christ! There's so much shit added in the player's path, half the enemy encounters become this challenge of navigating your way around garbage that's been added. If only the collision to these meshes were either turned off or actually optimized, that wouldn't been a big problem. I don't know why, but the burnt up corpse looks absolutely hilarious now. I need to bring up the point about the graffiti. While it's totally realistic to see some fucked up graffiti in real life, again, like the sexualized models, I don't think they suit the game at all. 
To put it simply, a lot of people who might be enticed to check out the mod might be of a young age, like kids, and I'd really prefer it if they installed the explicit patch too before playing this mod at all. The underground parts of the chapter played nice. Apart from the overload of props, the underground felt atmospheric in a way. The cinematic mod changes do really make the place look grimy and dirty and smelly. However, this part of Root Canal almost softlocked me. Again, because of so much stuff that's been added, I got stuck on this huge piece of metal and I couldn't move. But then I did free myself. So then I was curious about what this mod does with Water Hazard. How will it make it better or screw it up, depending on what I see. And well, I was actually kind of impressed. The sheer scale of the city looks fantastic now with all this new stuff added in the 3D skybox. But again, in certain places, I saw structures with squeaky clean textures that made me feel as if the Combine had built this new infrastructure. But why did they make this? Are they stupid? Do they actually care for the people they are ruling with an iron fist? One simple fix for this would have been to just make the textures look aged and dirty like most of the mod is, to signify that the structure was always there before the Combine arrived. Squeaky clean newly made structures make it feel like the Combine are actually giving a damn about the infrastructure of the city and the easement of the people that reside there. Now what I'm about to say will land me in hot water but I'll say it anyway. I think the trees and the new buildings added in Water Hazard look great. There I said it. Now, I completely understand that Water Hazard is supposed to be in the outskirts of City 17, a chapter where Gordon escapes from the city and goes into the wild, but for a moment, let's not think about the source material, let's just take this chapter at face value. I absolutely love how the city around the canals actually feels like a city now instead of being a small industrial area like the original game. Now it truly feels like a canal system that runs through the city and out into the wastelands. And the trees? Well. I feel like it's trying to connect itself with the forest from episode 2. Keep in mind, the forest area isn't that far away from City 17, so seeing trees starting to pop up around the outskirts of the city isn't that far-fetched. You know, I hate that this mod did so many things wrong because there's a lot of things that it did right too. Like these new areas surrounding the first place where we stopped to open the gate, they look good. The new textures used in all of these interiors look good. Now, while it might seem weird to have the city keep going as the chapter goes on, I feel like it adds on to the fact how big City 17 actually is. It's not like you just drive for a few minutes and reach the outskirts, but here it feels like an actual effort that you were in the center of the city and now you have to escape through this dense city jungle. Now while we see pockets of areas that are mostly nature or industrial, a lot of the commercial and residential buildings will appear. But I will agree on something else too. The problem, the major problem with Cinematic Mod's map overhauls is that while it tries to do so much, it goes above and beyond to the point where the original identity of the maps just disappear and are replaced with this generic looking props polluted areas. Now I just said that I like some of these maps like the water hazard one. I do realize why most people don't like them. Oh and get this, the rebels are now decked out in army BDUs. Where the hell did they get their hands on army BDUs and equipment? While they do have a patch on the shoulder with the lambda symbol, this greyish uniform makes them look like they're the last remainder of some army, even though this takes place 20 years after the 7 hour war and most if not all armed forces of the planet have been wiped out. Sure, the original rebel outfit looks the same too, but it makes sense since they're wearing their original citizen clothes with some things that they took from the combine on top of it. Here, the new rebel outfit doesn't even remotely look similar to the citizen's clothing. Also, at this part, it was infamously known that the Dark Knight theme starts playing to make it look cinematic, but that didn't happen for me. I don't know why. In fact, the mod is supposed to have a soundtrack that is taken from movies, but for me it played the original soundtrack. This just might be a bug in my installation, most likely. After a level change, the skybox turns into this solid color which might be fine, but sometimes the sun, which is now a big ball for some reason, shines through what I assume to be a cloudy skybox. This combination is so much irritating on the eyes, but thankfully it gets a little better at the fight with the chopper. Then we arrive at Black Mesa East. The outside area doesn't look half bad, kind of implements the idea that we're finally outside the city in the middle of a forest, away from all the combine. 
Now, Black Mesa East doesn't look that different. You know, it has the usual HD textures and new models and the lighting effects make it a little darker, I guess, but that's pretty much it. So we meet Doom 3 Judith along with William Knight and a very oily Vortigaunt. The major addition here is the Alex room, which kind of shows that she lives in a very dingy looking place, cause seriously, look at that mattress. Also here I noticed that the world model for the MP5 is actually an MP5K. Man, I would have loved this mod if it had the MP5K in it instead of the normal MP5. Now the training area for the gravity gun is of course filled to the brim with overgrown grass and I don't know about this. It kinda works but it doesn't. Maybe if it wasn't as high as it is or as much as dense as it is. It just gives off strange vibes man, I can't really make my mind on this. Waist high grass is everywhere in cinematic mod and it legit makes me feel uneasy going through it. Ravenholm looked kinda decent, apart from the overuse of flora again and occasional tree here and there, not much was changed from the original. However, the tone mapping kicks in and it has this strange greenish tint with a purplish ambient light. If there is any place I expected to be way too much junk in, it was this chapter, but I was proven wrong as most of Ravenholm remained as it is. Sure, it does add a lot of stuff in the rooms and props and stuff like that, but they're all off to the side and don't get in the way like most of the other maps do. Not to sound like a broken record again, but it's the lighting and the lens flare that get to me. The way the light balance is blown out puts a strain on my eyes, but honestly, the texture work made Ravenholm look even more horrifying. The dead bodies or the corpses were another nice touch. In the original game, it feels like you're the only one alive along with the Padre, and while that is the case here too, these added corpses and these little things that are added to show signs of life or at least previous signs of life just make it feel like it's just been overrun by the zombies and the undead. Also, the skybox was again a simple looking gradient of colors and in a way I kind of liked it cause it gave off a very mystical feeling to the place. But holy god does the last place of the chapter have so much ferns in it, like unholy amounts of foliage is placed here. And the biggest issue with the ferns is that if there's a head crab on the ground, good fucking luck trying to shoot the little shit before it jumps at you. The caves, again, are mildly updated with new textures and a few little models here and there. This is what most of this mod should have been. Just some texture updates here, a new handful of models there, and call it a day. The way cinematic mod just goes overkill in most maps seriously makes it overwhelming. For example, the area right after the mines. Trains are still used here, the combine uses it, why does it make this area look like it's straight out of The Last of Us? However, this big machinery area in the back does make the area look like a proper docks area. The overall scale of these machines made everything feel so small in comparison, and I really liked this. Then cinematic Winston gets shot in a very cinematic way and now we're at Highway 17. Okay, so now we get a full view of those machines at the docks, but dear god, the skybox is... Well, there is no skybox. Maybe the mod wanted this to be a foggy area or a nighttime area, but the fucking sun is still shining through. This is not cinematic at all. Yeah, this mismatch of the sky and the environment light being sunny is just the start of the problem. Now remember earlier I said that I liked the trees being here since the white forest isn't that far off from the city? Well, at first there are a shit ton of trees everywhere you look, but at some points they're in the middle of your path you're supposed to take. Navigating this Highway 17 isn't that bad, but it certainly doesn't help that the map has been turned into this wide open, densely filled forest area. It's even more open than the original maps, and there's multiple paths to take, and trees come out of nowhere and confuse you as to where to go. I would have much preferred the trees to remain in the hilly 3D skybox, cause honestly having so much of them at the fucking beach of all places doesn't look right. There is far and few things to appreciate in this version of Highway 17. Like 90% of the mod, only the textures in these places look good. The character models and the 5 billion trees in the middle of my path? That doesn't look that good. Surprisingly, the only actual good looking model in the whole mod was of Odessa Cabbage. 
I mean, he resembles his original version a little, but now has better looking textures to his model. But so far, Cinematic Mod makes me sad. Not because I don't like it, but because it could have been so much more. Just with the replaced textures alone, it would have been one of the greatest overhauls ever made. But the new models, the map changes, the questionable things like Alex's toy or her insides being fully modeled and other stuff like that, got the mod a reputation that can only be described as a joke. You can't even mention cinematic mod without being called a pervert or a psychopath. The worst part is that these things aren't even the main problems of the mod. The overdone changes to the maps are. You aren't with Alex throughout the game, she appears in some of the maps, but the map themselves are literally the most essential part of the whole experience, and a lot of them have things done to them that I just outright don't like or would rather not have. Skyboxes that are single color, ferns everywhere, props in the middle of player's path, all of this just adds up to ruin what good this mod might have had to present. Good things to present, you know, like those little extended areas that actually feel like a part of the original maps they're inspired from, or the 3D skyboxes and the structures in the distance, these are great additions. Now I don't have a lot of experience with cinematic mods, offshoots, but there is a Fake Factory remaster that's currently in the works, which I think is exactly what this mod should have been. I would love to see a cinematic mod light version or a basic version of this. You know, something that keeps the good parts and removes the bad parts. Most of Highway 17 is completely ruined by the skybox like this place here. Just a good looking skybox with a sun that wasn't as big as this, that would have helped a lot. Also there's a bridge here for some reason, I mean, okay, but why is it curved like that, lamau? Oh, and if you were sick of the trees, look how many there are at the lighthouse part. But then you have cool looking areas like this place where you fight the antlion guard, actual good looking places. Of course in my playthrough the antlion guard bugged out so I cheesed the whole fight. I have to mention, cinematic mod also changes some gameplay elements, all of which I had disabled. Because it says it improves enemy AI, but the only thing I noticed is that damage is increased a lot, so you die more easily and they aim better, so it's making the enemies much more difficult to fight and it's making the player much easier to die. So that was an option that I just disabled. Anyway, moving on, we get some training on handling balls. We move ahead to the level with the beaches and the Nova Prospect in the distance. I love the rainy weather here along with the dark grey skybox, but of course the mod wouldn't bother itself to remove the fucking sun though. This map expands the backwoods area of the encampments, meaning there are now routes through the woods to get through the next encampment. This almost serves as a somewhat of a open, semi-open world half-life and how that concept would work. In this case, it kinda makes most of the level easy since you can ambush the combine soldiers from the woods and not approach them from the front. Now, I want you to imagine what's in Noah Prospect. Take a wild fucking guess what the mod adds in Nova Prospect. Trees and ferns, of course, because why the fuck not? Every prison needs trees and ferns. It's the same story as before. I like the new textures on the map itself, but all of it is ruined by the goddamn foliage. But I do have to give credit to something, and that something is the 3D skybox. Again, it looks great. It makes Nova Prospect look more menacing, bigger, you know, towering over the player. The insides of the prison itself didn't get the drastic makeover I was fearing, it follows what it did in Ravenholm. New textures, a few new props to make it look a little dense, and a strong tone mapping. This time it's a bluish tint with some strong contrast. This again blows out the bloom effect and makes most bright areas glow very much, however in very rare cases like this, this new sense of tone and atmosphere does look nice, but in very rare cases. While this footage runs in the background, let me take a moment to talk about a thing I've noticed. While I'm not the biggest CM fan, nor am I the biggest CM hater, I feel like Half-Life fans have very, very strong opinions about this mod. I always come across conversations where two opposite sides of the opinions clash together very destructively. For example, there will be a person who likes cinematic mod so much to the point that they'll say that the stock game, the original game, is absolutely garbage and everyone else is wrong. And then there will be a person who says cinematic mod fans should be nailed to the cross because they're all degenerates. 
I just want to tell both of these kinds of people, chill the fuck out, my mans. While I myself show immense energy in these videos, most of that energy is just there for your entertainment. Do you really think Hunt Down the Freeman is my favorite game, given how much I joke about that? It's good to have passion. Passion drives a community, but I feel like this bipolar communication between CM fans and haters leaves a bad taste for everyone. So please, play Half-Life, play the mods, whichever mods, and have fun. Hell, have fun together. I have seen unicorns too in these conversations though. Unicorns who come in and provide a very balanced and true feedback about CM. People like that are much appreciated because they provide an honest analysis of a topic rather than going for their guns immediately. So yeah, chill out. Anyway, after meeting up with Pokies, I mean Alex, we finish up on the Nova Prospect chapter. The teleporter chamber is another good example of how this mod does some levels good. It stays true to the original style, only updates the textures to a higher resolution and makes them look good while adding in some lighting effects that might have been good for the time, I guess. Cinematic mod is a mod that should have been more of this and less of this. It's as simple as that. And also, none of this. This is just outlandish shit. Now back in City 17, we get to take part in the uprising. Well, most of what I said about City 17 earlier stays true here, but now it's much more filthier and a lot more destroyed. Most of it actually looks pretty good though, the debris, the destroyed bits, but there's one part later on that's just something I guess, more on that in a bit. So right, we get to take part in the uprising with fully decked out citizens. Might as well imagine these are special forces soldiers that came out of nowhere to help us overthrow the Combine. Again, some scenes look genuinely great and made me appreciate the hours of work it must have gone into updating the maps. Well, at least these parts of the maps, you know, going through the apartment blocks and the apartment themselves brought this sense of realism that I wasn't really expecting there to be. Actual well done upgrades to the maps that improve how they look. Thank God there weren't any overuse of foliage again. This central area where you have to blow out the generator looked nice too. The grayish atmosphere in the middle with the sunlight hitting the top of the buildings, the trees even looked good here somehow. The nexus area, however, has a perfectly kept garden of trees in it, which was very nice of the combine gardener to do, but throughout all of this, I kinda liked the desaturated tone mapping it has going on. This would be strange to say, but this look reminded me of Battlefield 3 and 4's overall atmosphere, you know, the greyish bluish desaturated look of it all. The rundown nature of the nexus's interior was again improved only with the textures. You might notice a pattern throughout the whole video. Any level that didn't add a whole lot, only added the HD textures, looked the best. I wonder why. Now I would love to tell you about the rooftop battle I had, if only I could fucking see anything that is. But oh, this part with the striders and the endless amounts of combine soldiers, this was the part I was talking about earlier. I don't know why, maybe because I was actually getting sick while playing this mod or maybe I was absolutely overstimulated here, but this map is the worst I played through. That's what I remember, but looking at the footage, the map itself, the 3D skybox with the extra buildings, the fogs, the striders, also the fucking sun I guess, all of this combined to make it look kinda good, but it didn't play good if that makes any sense. I mean, this would be an amazing map to have as a background on the main menu, but the way how monotonous it has become, the way how desaturated it has become, it kinda makes the map lose its layout. Like, I'm trying to explain this in words, but when you go through this, usually how the colors are, how the map is laid out, you kinda understand where to go and what to do but because everything is a singular tone, singular color, it just confused me. Man, I am getting sick of talking about this mod. Jarvis, fast forward me to the Citadel. Now the Citadel was kept mostly stock. No new details, no new props or models, no fucking trees or ferns, just your normal Citadel with high resolution remastered textures and these red LED gaming lights on the borders. All of the Citadel levels look like this and they look good. And the final section with Breen 
looks good too and that's fucking it. That's all of Half-Life 2 with the cinematic mod. Hold on, what? Yeah, yeah, cinematic mod. What? Cinematic mod works with the episode? Jesus Christ! I am not sitting through a whole playthrough of the episodes with cinematic mod. No siree, Bob. The least I could do is, I guess, take a quick gander at them. Alright, so episode 1 looks like it got the same treatment like City 17 got in the original game. Episode 2 has a shit ton more trees in it than the whole Amazon forest. I bet navigating the episode 2 maps is a nightmare with this installed. But yeah man, overall, here's the summary of it all. Cinematic mod is far from being a absolutely diabolical evil mod that people paint it to be. It's not that bad. But just because it has sexualized character models for Alex and Judith isn't an enough of a complaint to outright boycott it. This issue is fixed by not using the models. The explicit graffiti and other elements can be patched out with a single download. The main issue with Cinematic Mod is with its maps. As I've been saying throughout the video, they are a mixed bag. Underneath every extra tree, fern, broken skybox or big ass blinding sun, there's an actual good looking level or map. Sure it might not be the most perfect looking map ever made but god damn it Jürgen Virhilig almost spent a decade on this mod and I appreciate the man's effort. Even though some of that effort was entirely in an unneeded space, I still appreciate it. This, I appreciate this, not this. Cinematic mod is still one of the most infamous mods ever made, but deep down I feel like it would have been more than that had Jürgen listened to feedback and made some changes that the community wanted. Cinematic mod would have been the ultimate overhaul mod for Half-Life 2 and pairing it years later with M mod, it would have been an unstoppable combination. A cinematic mod, regardless of the few good parts it has, will always be known for sexualizing Alex, overusing foliage, and packing maps with so much detail than what was actually needed. Oh what now? Yeah? Half-Life 2 beta but cinematic? Oh, so I guess that's going to be part 2. Thanks so much for watching and a big thanks to these benefactors for supporting the channel. HPR, Hobgobbies, Unusual, Taylor, Wuflo, Scooms, Aoi, Nicholas Go, Imperial Embers, T-Boy 301, Tombstone, Jack 5282, Tyvanesium, Quiltman, 501st Clone Boy, Interloper CS, TTG, Robocop, Noel, Nobody Important, Franco San Leahy, Justin Imbergriff, Tedasaur, Otakon Nachos, Lamdre, Roadkill, Walter, No Click, Geode, Fisher Grice, Hawk Assault, Mr. Spabon, Jelen, A Normal Street Lamp, TRR Droid, and Bipolet. Part 2 of this series will be released soon, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.